Alright, hello and welcome to Camel Finance. I'm your boy Camel and today I've got a whole heap of cryptocurrency news for you. Some, a tiny little bit on energy crisis. There's a lot of economic events on the calendar over the next couple of weeks. So I'll be going through that and then showing you some trade setups that I am looking to enter. So without further ado, let's get into this. The adoption of technology as shown by the S curves here, each one of these colors corresponds to, as you could probably tell, like the telephone, the TV, uh, the PC, the cell phone, the internet, so on and so forth. And if you're thinking that you're late to Bitcoin, then you're entirely incorrect. You can see here, Bitcoin is only just getting started and is actually being adopted twice as fast as the internet was. So the internet being here, we are being adopted twice as fast as this. So don't make the mistake of thinking you are late to this party. If anything, you are incredibly early. The Lightning Network has made a new high at 4,700 Bitcoin. So this is a new all-time high for the Lightning Network capacity. Lightning continues to be adopted. It continues to grow. As a result, Bitcoin continues to scale. I've got a one and a half minute clip here to show you that shows that Bitcoin mining does not waste energy. It consumes energy waste. So... The miners aren't out. just beneficial to create a monetary return. They also offer a solution to gases that would have been flared or vented off, reducing the emissions at every site that they're deployed. Producers are willing to invest in this tech if they can get a reasonable payout and it solves an environmental issue, uh, which is you know their emissions uh, profile. If they can reduce that. When we can offer them a product that reduces their tax obligations, like their pe the carbon penalties, uh, it's exciting. Uh, it's exciting to them. It's exciting to everyone because just wasting less resources is exciting in general, I think. We've worked with them since early 2020 on uh, this part of our greenhouse gas emissions project to reduce it. And so, yeah, it, it generates a little bit of profit on the other end and it's good. So it drastically reduces our emissions and keeps us legal, so it's great. It's a natural gas engine running a hydraulic pump, downhole pump. Uh, oil comes up in the top line to the tanks, oil and water. We process it over there, heat it up, truck it out. Casing gas comes on the lower one, gets processed inside the engine. All that gas is used for our engine and our burners, and the excess gas is metered and then over to the cube. The control system allows us to vary the load on the engine, so the engine varies its consumption of fuel. And that's how we make sure that we're, you know, minimize the amount of excess gas that gets vented or flared. So there you have it. And if you haven't seen yesterday's video, which goes through the entire energy crisis to wealth transfer, all of this stuff, and indeed covers this sort of thing. If you haven't seen that, then go and watch that. The video was called The Energy Crisis and Bitcoin. Crypto exchange Mercado Bitcoin has let go of 15% of its workforce as of September the 1st as part of a series of measures taken by 2TM, its holding company, directed to streamline operations. So the bear market is clearly having an effect on more and more exchanges, as you would expect. Got here from the root, this is the RSI for the S&P and the RSI for Bitcoin. You can see they are both down in oversold levels and starting to form what could be a bottom like a rounding process as we saw back here in the bottom of 2018 so lg is going to launch a crypto wallet the cryptocurrency wallet which is currently in a testing phase will be launched later this year and might be linkable with lg appliances to make payments for certain services so i wonder if you'll be able to pay for your i don't know your tv bill or your refrigerator subscription <laughs> via crypto through their lg wallet i'm not exactly sure how this what this implies but this is certainly adoption, if nothing else. The Hollywood actor Bill Murray's wallet has reportedly been hacked for 119 Ethereum, valued at around $188,000. So that's not very nice. And a fun fact about Ethereum, Ethereum actually has a larger market cap than the Bank of China. So let that one sink in for a minute. We've got this here from T-Analyst. This is the, the trend line, the only trend line that matters in my opinion. And a break of this will likely yield the start of the true bull market for Bitcoin. But do we first have to chop sideways and drop into this low, this, this four-year cycle low around November time? I think 
that that is the most likely outcome for Bitcoin. So possibly a bit more pain, possibly a false breakout followed by a retest and then we can go. But we're getting close, I'm sure of that. And if we take a look at this second chart from T-Analyst, you'll see that we have possibly printed a double bottom for Bitcoin just like we did in the 2018 bottom. So are we about to scream off out of here? Quite possibly, but there's also a good chance that we might end up forming some sort of triple bottom into the end of November before we go. So we'll see how this works out. But I am confident that we are much closer to the bottom than we are to the top. I saw this and I thought this was brilliant. Stop panic selling your Bitcoin. If you panic sold in recent weeks, this guy probably bought it from you. This address buys two to eight million dollars worth of Bitcoin every single day, regardless of price. DCA Bitcoin and hold. So this guy does not care about price. This guy is just accumulating Bitcoin as much as he possibly can. I've got a quick bit on energy for you and then we will move on to some charts and economic calendars. I found this and I thought this was very, very interesting. The um, Obviously this place invaded this place, right? Let me blow this up a bit so you can see it. This place has invaded this place and this place decided to take the moral high ground and start putting restrictions over here, right? I can't help but think this whole thing kind of makes sense to me now. So this place takes the moral high ground and puts restrictions over here. And now for this place to get its energy, its gas from this place, it needs to first route it around this route here, which is significantly more expensive, having to liquefy it and pay more transportation costs, resulting in, of course, what we have seen of late, which is insanely high prices for energy over in this region. So I can't help but think that this is likely engineered as part of the reset. This is likely these guys aren't really noticing a scrap of difference or suffering at all. <laughs> and really, it's just this area that is as a result of this silly route and these political games that everyone has to play. So I thought that was interesting. At the same time, that place has said the Nord Stream gas pipeline is shut down indefinitely due to an oil leak. So are we going to see more shortages coming and higher prices? Quite possibly. Here is a little breakdown. So they're saying that their leader is just calling the G7's bluff. Maybe that's the case, or maybe they're all working together to try to cause maximum discomfort. He says it's absolutely insane that Western policymakers continue to double down. People are going to freeze and businesses will collapse in Europe this winter and emerging markets will subsequently face their own shortages of Europe, outbid them for alternative energy sources. Simply recognizing reality is not being pro this leader or pro that place. That place has an immense amount of economic leverage and with it, the ability to cast Europe into a new age depression. So I don't think it's fair to blame them. Now, I don't know, I shouldn't really be giving my comments because I'm not really qualified to speak on this sort of thing. But as far as I can tell, Everyone's working together. It's all to do with this new one world thing, right? And uh, I, I don't think it's fair to point the finger and blame people. Now, maybe I'm wrong. I'm certainly not pro this guy. I'm certainly not pro anything. I just see what seems to be master plan unfolding. That's what it seems like to me. Let's keep going. Over in Italy, they are burning their energy bills. So I love to see this. They are fighting back. They've decided they're not going to pay them. So I hope this works out for them. I hope it was some sort of bluff. I hope they don't have to pay this. And I hope there's not too much suffering as a result of this. Meanwhile, in Germany, here's what one ounce of gold looks like. So the people that have gold, they can trade their gold for what they need, such as firewood, in order to keep their house warm. Now, full disclosure, I think this might be satire. I think this might be a bit of a joke, but it's really not funny because if they're not there now, then they will be in the not too distant future, won't they? On Monday, the 5th of September, this coming Monday, it is Labor Day in the US, which is their equivalent sort of bank holiday, I believe. So hope any of the American brothers watching this have a good Labour Day on Monday. It will be quiet for us UK traders on this side of the pond due to lower volume and some silly hours, out of hours markets and stuff. However, I wanted to quickly go through this economic calendar over the next couple of weeks because things are going to heat up quite quickly as far as I can tell. So expect low volume and out of hours markets on the Monday for Labour Day as I said. On Tuesday, we have the PMI, the Purchasing Managers Index, will be coming out. The PMI is an indicator of economic expansion or contraction. It's measured from 0 to 100, and a reading of 50 or above is considered indicative of an expanding economy. So, of course, 
Last month, we had a reading sub 50, indicating that we have a contracting economy. We are forecast to be slightly higher than the prior month. However, we are still forecast to be sub 50, which is again indicative of a contracting economy. So this will be highly market moving. ISM is the Institute of Supply Management, and essentially this is the company that compiles the PMI data. So they're one and the same thing really. So this is all gonna be quite market moving and that is on the Tuesday. So we should watch out for that. Moving into Wednesday. Wednesday, we've got a couple of Fed members speaking and the short-term energy outlook. Then Thursday, we have jobless claims, initial jobless claims. We've got the Fed Chair Powell, Jerome Powell speaking. This is gonna be highly market moving on the Thursday. So we've got to watch out for that. On Friday, we've got some more Fed speak and the commitment traders for a bunch of commodities and the NASDAQ and so on and so forth. Then the following week, we have got a very big week. We've got consumer inflation expectations starting on the Monday. We have got the core CPI and the month over month and the year over year CPI coming out. So will we see a continued trend in that we've already seen peak inflation or will we get a hot CPI print? Will the CPI be above? Will the entire markets be tanking as a result of this? This really is going to be a pivotal moment, the CPI print. So we will all need to pay close attention to this CPI print and see what we get. On the Wednesday, we've got the PPI. So we'll need to keep an eye on this as well. And then moving down, you'll see that the following week on the Wednesday, we've got the FOMC statement and the FOMC press conference. So there is a lot on the economic calendar over the next couple of weeks. We will need to be paying attention. It really is make or break for markets. If we get that low CPI print again, then I will likely be right in my thesis that the lows are in. If we get a hot CPI print, then it's quite possible that enormous downside is on the cards an engineered collapse is on the cards and a lot more pain from where we are. We will need to be open and unbiased, ready to adjust positions if the data tells us to. We will of course be looking into the FOMC wording to check for any hints of a dovish pivot. We know that the Fed is going to go broke soon if it continues to hike rates, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't have a master plan to deliberately hike rates into a slowing economy and blow everything up in order to roll out CBDCs. So are they there yet or not? That remains to be seen. If you want to see how I deal with all of this and how I adjust my stance or don't adjust my stance if we get a low CPI print, then make sure you're subscribed and turn the notifications on. And with that said, let's get into some charts. We have the dollar here kind of creeping higher, but again, you know, it doesn't really matter. This all comes down to the CPI print. A hot CPI print will see this run as everyone flees risk assets and a CPI print that's lower than the last month will see this come off incredibly quickly. Moving up to some trades, we've got some trades lining up. So good, this was too early to have a cycle low by the looks of things. Yep, day 35. So I expect maybe a bit more volatility and then we can get a daily cycle low for which we can long. We're close enough to this now that I'm willing to entertain something like this. But we'll leave that there for now. I will notify, I'm not trying to call any levels at this point. I'm just trying to wait to see what can materialize. Maybe we could end up having a trend line like this. But we're looking to first form a swing in this sort of timing band for the daily cycle low so this will be a long over the coming days i'm sure of that nasdaq what have we got slightly more ordered trend line i think so perhaps this is an entry for the nasdaq i will line this up here wherever we get this breakout clean this chart up a little bit we don't really need that we don't really need this anymore so yeah potentially a long for the nasdaq coming up too and if you don't want to enter this early then you could potentially take this as the safer option. If you prefer to trade the Dow, I think we have a similar situation on the Dow. So a break above that would be a long as well. The VIX has seemingly bounced off this support. It's just about holding this trend line. But I think given where we are in the cycle, I've already kind of explained this in the prior videos. I expect this to come off now. I'm out of this position anyway, so that's fine. We have a FTSE 100 putting in quite a steep trend line so this is a bit steep for me we'll play a bit more patient wait for a bottom to form and i think there's a long out of here but i'll notify that as and when i see it real real i think we are likely going to abandon this maybe we get a wyckoff spring and recover in which case we can long here something like this but for now i'm not super interested in this and i'm close to just abandoning this as a choice so i'll get back to you if i decide to take a trade i'll make sure i update you gold 
is this the daily cycle low certainly has the making of it but i don't want to see any kind of chop like this we've had our undercut it went a lot deeper than i thought it would we have held this you could argue we've got a double bottom formed just above this red line here which of course goes all the way back to these touches here so this is a big level for gold i think if we can open higher and start to push up then this becomes the new stop loss level here and it also becomes an add or an, a new position for me so i'll probably move this like this and then add a position something i guess it would look like this and then we'll we'll target higher up the range and i'll move this stop up in line with that as well for the whole lot so that's the plan we're not there yet i'll make sure that i update you as and when i take this position silver we have had the scam wick so i think for me again if gold can do what i just said then i think we can put a long on a break out of this trend line which will look something like this but it's not honestly looking good for silver i don't have i've lost a lot of confidence in this now that doesn't mean i'm going to let that loss of confidence affect my trade of course if we get a breakout then I, as a breakout trader i will take the trade but a retrace like this is technically speaking structural damage so we'll have to keep a strong eye on this that doesn't mean it can't recover and go it doesn't mean this wasn't just to take all the liquidity from back here under these stops but i'll continue to update as appropriate silver miners we're still hanging on look so again if gold can do what i said and move up if we can get a strong a strong bounce out of here then i think this stop can come up to here and bitcoin let's look at bitcoin i think we're just gonna either bleed out or maybe get a little fake pump and then drop into this cycle low i've got the long here lined up and ready to go I, can, I don't really need this level. Clean this chart up a bit. I'm not trading off of these boxes. I think these were just an example from a while ago. Don't need this anymore. Don't need this anymore. And don't need this anymore. So we can keep this whole thing quite, quite simple, quite basic. We can even get rid of these for now. So we have our, our big line at the top. And our 60-day cycle low in focus. We are now only about eight, eight or nine days, seven days from that cycle low so i will be looking for a swing low to long here and if you want to play a bit safer you could wait for a trend line break out of this giant falling wedge ethereum i think much the same we can clean this chart up a bit because it's all getting a bit crowded isn't it so we'll get rid of that get rid of this as well we don't really need this line anymore i don't think we don't need this line anymore because that trade is complete and this line got us out near the top so happy days we can keep this line because this is still it's still respecting this line to some extent but ultimately i think the swing will come on the 60 day cycle low for bitcoin and then we can entertain longs from there you could also entertain a long from this downward sloping blue trend line here and if you wanted to wait until full certainty then you could enter above this line here so that's it from me i hope you enjoyed today's episode let me know if you did drop a like on the video i'd really appreciate it it really helps with the algorithm it actually makes a massive difference so please do that i'd really appreciate it and uh, i hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend i'm going fishing again today it's a bit overcast here but i'm gonna see what i can do anyway and uh, i hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend all the best from me take care cheers bye